Everybody, how's it going? It's uh, Slappy McPhee, and this time around, we're going to be doing a preview series with the Pine Rock Pro 64 board and our beta build. And with us today, we have Neon. Hello. Steven. Hello. And Cubert. Hey. Hey, Cubert, we're going to go ahead and kind of just run through some of these features quick and like some of the issues we already know, and then we'll dive in uh, here on the screen capture. This one um, has got a full mate desktop accessible from the ES system selection. We, we created a custom selection for it. We're doing kind of like a mixed mode this time around where uh, we've got SDL 1.2 emulators and ports launching via Exanet from within standard ES. Launch and exit videos are working, BGM is working, and uh, we've got some newly working emulators for the Rock Pro 64. Standalone Atari 800, Advanced MAME 1.4, Advanced MAME 3.9, Advanced MESS 3.9. And when we say that some of these are new, right, they're actually new in our, in our beta compared to the alpha stage that we were at. Uh, Daphne, XROAR, Quasi88, XM7, J, uh, Intel, uh, Intellivision, SDL, TRS, Linapple, GS+, TI99. So there's a bunch of stuff that we've actually been able to get working here just in the last few weeks. Um, made a lot of breakthroughs. Um, some of the issues we do have is that Amaberry uh, right now will not compile. Um, the Amaberry dev is, is working on that. Movement 64 Plus, Glide, and... 64 segmentation faults. Split Wolf, we have a bus error. Uh, LR MAME, LR MESS, LR MAME 2016. I'm not sure if they're actually good to go in the last few weeks, but they were noted as uh, failing to compile. We were having some other issues with N64 emulators. Uh, the non libretro so in other words, the standalone recast is not working. Um, so we've got a bunch of different things going on here that we're still trying to work through, but uh, oh. Uh, the NDS Drastic is still being worked on by the developer. Uh, one of the recent new things is that uh, we get Saturn to start working. So, you know, we're, we're constantly working on this stuff and trying to get things debugged and figured out. But we wanted to go ahead and put together a preview video to kind of show how things are going, especially with the pending release of the Rochambeau case for the board. <coughs> Um, which I have done a video on recently on uh, initial unboxing and assembly, which we'll have a card for here if somebody wants to go and check that out. But, Cubert, uh, let's go ahead and start by going into the desktop quick and just kind of showing that. Launch a browser window, get into to YouTube, and you guys have anything to say about how well the desktop performs? Uh, I haven't really messed around with it too much yet. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. How about you, Steven? Um, I haven't had a chance to use too much of it, but it's the power That's of the board good. itself makes it quite usable. That's oh, good to hear. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was really impressed how snappy it is. I mean, that's that's totally usable. I mean, look at this. I mean, just for your browsing needs, you know? Look at this. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be something that will make the community happy, right? Because there's just times where you're like, you know, let's say you got a friend over, or you're talking about something, or you just want to check something quick. You don't want to have to have a dedicated PC. You can hop into the desktop and, you know, fiddle about, go to YouTube or go Google search something or whatever. Yeah, as I was saying, great way to have like walkthroughs or something. Yeah, that's another good point as well, for sure. Sees my network. It even it even mounted my uh, retro arena drive, as you can see here, so I could like copy ROMs over if I needed to. So like if I wanted to put a USB drive in there, I could c drag and drop ROMs onto my external as well. So it's pretty neat. Yeah, that's so, like, actually a really good ROM point, here right? And then drag things down here. Yeah. So like if you have an external, now that we have this Mate desktop, we can actually just download from whichever you know your Motion Blue sites or whatever whatever you want. You download whatever you get and just. It'll download to the SD card by default, or you can set it to download to the direct direct spot. I mean, you yep. don't even have to worry about file systems now. 
yeah, that's definitely going to give people another avenue, so that's definitely good stuff for sure. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and flip back out of the desktop then, and I'll let you take the reins on uh, some stuff that you might want to uh, show off uh, working here, Hubert. Uh, let's do some Saturn. Uh, a lot of additions to Saturn. Saturn's been running really awesome. It's it's great on the N2. It's uh, really good on the Rock Pro 64 as well. Um, some games will run at 4x with zero frame skip, which is pretty cool. Um, other other games like uh, Sega Rally Championship, give that a try at um, 2x with frame skip. I think we can get full speed on it. I don't know, let's try that. Yeah, so I know that we've tried to take a look at uh, Est was it Astol or Astol? Um, Astol, yeah, with the black screen where it just sits there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we. Work. I haven't been able to really figure that one out yet because according to the compatibility page for the emulator, maybe it's a typo, but it's saying that it's supposed to be fairly playable. Um, so it was playable originally. Button. Okay. So it was originally playable, yeah. Well, it stopped It stopped after the the original, before we were the Ra or Thera or whatever the hell we are now. I can't remember how we pronounce it. But uh, yeah, so yeah. That was before, but look how nice this runs. Oh my gosh. So yeah, Astol has been broken for a while. This is at 2x right now uh, with frame skip. And I'm not gonna put the frame display up there because if you don't see that, you're not gonna know that it's even dropping frames if it does. Uh, what else do you have going on with uh, for another game that you can pop in there? The what big thing for me has been being able to play PSP with higher resolutions and everything. Right. And being able to play Super Nintendo with better uh filters on it right 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 okay let's do that hold on one second here let me get to uh... so let's go ahead and go to um something like can we go to outrun um Now, I will say that according to what we're being told by the Pine folks, that our PSP seems to run a little bit slower than their recall box version. However, I believe uh, after talking with Eric, part of the reason might be because they're actually running 
a much older version of PPSSPP. Um, so the compatibility is not as big? Right. I, well, I mean, I, I think not necessarily compatibility, but I think that, you know, there might be different things that we we need to uh, address comparatively, right? But we don't, we don't typically have the policy of running versions of software that's two or three years old unless there's just nothing else there. You know, kind of like, for example, the Atari Jaguar, right? That emulator right. hasn't been updated in ages. So that's the reason why right. the emulator is what it is. Does anyone actually use that? But Jaguar, actually, uh, on the N2, it's actually uh, playable. Really? <laughs> I, I have it on mine, yeah. Uh, Tempest 2000 is actually playable. You get about 20 frames per second, but that's the most playable it's ever been. Yeah, so, I mean, I've, I've seen crazy. people play Jaguar. Stuff. Yeah, I've seen people play Jaguar on, you know, like PCs. But, yeah, they, it's you can't even call it a grail. Right, it's not like it's a grail or anything like that. Um, but you know, some people want to have that or that unicorn. You know, they, you know, they want to see about some of that stuff. Mainly, right, because there was only a couple exclusives, and for you know one reason or another, there's people out there that really thought the AVP was fun. They like those kinds of games, yeah. and so that's why they'd like to see that system work. Um, okay, so now, for some reason, oh, never mind. This is Rock Pro. That's why. It doesn't do what the N2 does already. So hold on one second here. Let's yeah, the on. drivers are different on this one compared to the, the N2 as well. Non-buffered with frame skip. I don't know. I don't know. I've been messing around today playing with the filters in uh, PPSP. That's something I've never been able to do on Max U4, really. Oh, yeah, putting filters on there, like a scanline's on there? Yeah. It was kind of nice to play uh, 7th Dragon 2020 with uh, the CRT scanlines. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you'll have to kind of tell us, Q, how it's looking on your end, because once again, we're seeing the same behavior here. Where it's yeah, I got... Um... Well, right now, I have it running at 100% uh, 30 frames per second with frame skip 1. No problem. Once in a while, I get a, a little drop in frames, um, but it's really, really smooth, but it looks beautiful. Um, no sound skipping or anything else like that, which I like. And I'm pretty sure I can tweak this a little bit better by doing this. Hold on one second. We'll turn it back up to here, buffered rendering, go auto frame skip, and then just, we can run it as PSP2X. Oh, buffer. Hmm, for some reason it won't let us change the rendering resolution. We'll find out when I... I think it's because you have auto frame scan. Yeah, auto scan. Yeah. So, but as you can see, it's uh, looks pretty ugly that way. So let's go back to what we were. I think it's this way actually, without any frame skip, that works correctly. Yep, there you go. 60-60. Nope. Nope, just 30, yeah. So, yeah. See, like on the N2, it goes 60-60 with that setting. Um, but, once again, that's not what we're, we're doing a video of. So. What I yeah. had before was better. So, there's definitely some... some some tweaks that people can do um that it looks like you know obviously it'll play better um let's see about trying a different game i don't want to get into necessarily get into any of the god of wars right but let's um let's also take a look at uh let's take a look at a different game that we really haven't okay um, um, you know what i can't remember you don't have crud you didn't have Midnight, have Midnight Club, right? 
I don't know. Let me take a look here. I added some games. I don't know. We'll find out. We can do like wipe out pure and stuff like that too if we want. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have Midnight Club, but um, what was the one I just said I was gonna do? Wipe out. Wipe out. Yeah. That one was 2005. This is 2007. There we go. We'll go with the newest one. See what happens. So while this is loading, yeah, I mean, have we been able to really do any testing with N64? Not too much, huh? We can check it right now. Because I think we, I mean, so this definitely has to have a config, so. That's kind of the weak point still. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, it looks like most of the, well, we know that LR loop into 64 doesn't compile, but, um. I don't know about how well the standalone, or if we even have parallel going in that. Standalone's the problem. Standalone is the one that has seg calls, and it looks like it's possibly a driver issue. Okay. Well, I know here, according well, according to um, the issues list that Eric has here, he said the LR loop in 64 plus. Well, that's that's the NX fails to compile. Yeah, but the non-NX one. Is just kind of slow. Did uh, have we been able to I, try parallel? I uh, tried a different plugin for uh, uh, standalone mm -hmm. muffin, and uh, it re it works, but it's uh, pretty slow. How's that running on your NQ? Pretty good, actually. It's not. For the most part, it's displaying pretty good. Yeah. It's playable. If 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 anybody's ever done testing with PSP, um, and Wipeout, if you don't have the right kind of frame rate, you can't play it at all. So, it's playable. It's very playable. I can control it. That's what I'm saying. It's easy to control her. Right. Where He's just responding. He's not skipping frames. Um, uh, I think I'm on a time trial right now. Oh. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and switch gears then. And uh, let's see if... Uh, one good thing that I didn't have before is I actually have uh, navigation with joystick in my menu. Finally, like with joystick, I used to have to use my keyboard all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, now it actually works inside the. See, we can go wherever. Ah, uh, gotcha. With the controller. Exactly. Yeah. Um, have you guys had the opportunity to take a look at um a Thomas Wave and Naomi? Yeah, th those work. Yeah, they work yeah. pretty good. You want to go? Um, oh, one that I noticed that is working that um. Used to be slow, still has a little slowdown, but wasn't playable. And believe it or not, it's a game that you wouldn't think it is on the Atomus Wave. And it's a lot of fun, and you guys will probably make fun of me for it. But it's the Sushi Bar. Okay. Sushi Bar. Figure um, it's like Tetris, it. so you guys will make fun of me because I suck at it. So believe it or not, this game actually uh, kind of uh, brings the XU4 to a crawl for a couple uh, at, when it gets kind of intense. And uh, the N2 runs it. Perfectly fine. Um, this is actually running it finally. It wasn't before on our other alphas. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a lot of fun, actually. It's quick and easy. It's uh, just a battle game, like Tetris. But uh, you use sushi, and you just have to match four in any direction. You'll be able to see when uh, it's going on there that it uh, it just the the sound choked a little bit there, um, but it's actually playing, which is what it wasn't doing before. So, like on the XU4, this is already choking. I'm better at this than Tetris, I guess. Or at least Pokemon Tetris. So it's basically just like a battle, but it's actually running, and it was one of the games that was harder. But let's put something on there that'll please everybody here. Let's try another one. Uh, how about Fist of the North Star? Let's try that one. Sure. Asian Dynamite's usually pretty good. Oh, that too. Yeah, we can try both of those, actually. Yeah. Um, Fist of the North Star is really hard graphic-wise, so let's try that first. Because it's got the whole intro and everything that's just like a anime cartoon. We'll see if it chokes. You'll be able to see in the live in the uh, live feed. If it does, you'll be able to hear the music. I really like the presentation on this game. I don't like fighting games that much, but because of the presentation, I like to play this game. This is very beautiful. I love this game. King. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think, doesn't this kind of run a bit slow on the X-U4? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing games that run slow on the X-U4. Yeah, I was gonna say, because I've tried it a few dozen times. Yeah, this is, believe it or not, Sushi Bar is, like, really hard to run on the X-U4. Like, I had to turn down the resolution and everything to get the run around. I love the game. No, yeah, this is running good, but let's do Asian Dynamite here. <laughs> so after the three of you guys getting to mess around with this a little bit at least, uh, with this latest build do you feel that this is like where do you feel in regards to this being a beta do you think it's a solid beta or do you think that we're still kind of oh it's solid it's as solid as it's gonna I mean, get I right now if you solid. notice nothing's crashed nothing's crashed if you it's notice pretty it's pretty solid there. although there's some items that we should like, look at such as you know that n64 and that assets error but other than that no we got that fixed oh we did okay cool My assets folder became part of the belt. <laughs> this is just such an absurd game. I know, it's so much fun. So, yeah, what's the whole premise with this? It's just a. It, one it's on like one Die Hard Arcade, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> Die Hard Arcade or is, is basically it, but. um. But no, this is, I, I think they, I, I'm going to look it up on the Sega here. I'm going to bring it up here in a second. Just for my curiosity in a second. But it's, it's playing pretty well for you, Q? Oh, it's 100%. Yeah. There's not actually not any graphic glitches. I do like the Rock Pro 64's, um, 
the VGA looks, I mean, I mean the uh, HDMI looks nice on it. Like the colors and everything look better than like the XU4 colors. I agree. No, I just want to keep playing because it's actually really good. But you know what? I haven't tested Dreamcast, so we might as well just do one more. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that then, and then. Uh... And then we'll let it go. And now we'll just it looks do the like then that it's the using the um, the LR core. Right. And I mean, uh, also there's been some recent news as well that the LR core and the standalone are merging anyway. So. Right. Now. Sorry to put you on the spot, Stephen, but I think you could possibly answer this. If not, just send a virtual slap through the the microphone at me. But um, when you see a standalone merging with a Libretro, what does that really mean? As a project or like uh, just they're making a version for Libretro? I don't know. I mean, Galileo had said that there had been an announcement here recently that they were merging. Which I two? think they're merging as a project. Uh, recast sure. and LR recast. Oh, that just means that uh, they're merging the code bases. Basically, um, the differences between a standalone core and a libretro core has generally been you implement the libretro API to do a lot of functionality such as keyboard input and you know other things and what they're doing is they're going to basically combine the two so that it can be standalone more than likely or uh, work as basically a lib retro plugin okay gotcha so there's probably going to be less wasted effort or you know instead of two teams it's just one team basically making it's it's sort of pointless having to you'll see it's uh it's like basically a reskinning of the same game you'll hear in a second i like the i prefer this one over the uh Like all, all the funny hats and silly hats and everything are here and everything. But this is running perfect. And the VGA looks so good on that. I, I'm, I keep saying VGA, listen to me. Well, it's retro, man. You're good. just straight yeah, retro, I guess, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. See, so it's, it's the same game, basically. Just a reskin of it. Yeah. And same thing of uh, same thing of uh, Die Hard on the Saturn. It's a reskin of another game, I think. Yeah, I think that this one like is more visually appealing. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it doesn't look like this good. It doesn't look this good on the XU4. I'll give it that. It does not look this good. Well, all right, cool. Yeah, I think, like I said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this um, this session. And uh, we appreciate the community. Uh, they, of course, our, our Patreons. Uh, we definitely appreciate our YouTube affiliates out there. Um, Qbert, uh, you're going to see him popping up there in our list on the, the website. He is part of our team, but uh, he's been doing just a whole ton of work uh, when it comes to generating content especially gameplay content so uh, he'll be up there on our official page um, or sub page there on the website so but other than that guys uh, we appreciate it and we'll see you guys again soon on the next one